now i would like to uh, call upon stage dr rajesh kamble sir to present on inguinal region and external hernias warm morning to you all and uh, i think at the outset let me thank all the organizers who have called us upon from mumbai to speak on this dais a big congratulations to pondekar sir's team i think it feels very special to come to aurangabad i think way back in 2006 when i had started practice sabu sir had invited us and we had come to taj aurangabad so it's been now 20 years so feels very good to come here i think uh, the topic i'm going to talk is about hernias now let me at the outset tell all of you all that i'm an ultrasound guy and who performs ultrasound with lot of passion ctmr i have left to shrinivas desai sir so i don't interfere in those fields uh, so let's get on with the talk so basically when this talk of hernias was given to me a uh, lot of hernias came into my mind uh, because hernia is nothing but protrusion of a uh, bulge or an organ through a structure or muscle that usually contains it so all things ran into my mind i do lot of fetal ultrasounds so i thought of physiologic herniation of gut which we see as early as 10 weeks then the the diaphragmatic hernias which we pick in antenatal life so you all must be doing lot of ultrasound right from fetal till the male adult so cdh which we can pick up very confidently in antenatal life heart stomach seen in plain and gives a clue to the diagnosis also when we do fetal ultrasound we come across gastroschisis omphalocele and those also a type of hernias so but when you talk about abdominal hernias and external hernias uh, when you do scanning it could be just a part of your abdomen pelvis scanning or it could be a specific clinical request from your clinician that this patient uh, i think it's hernia and you need to give me an answer on ultrasound or they could be just asymptomatic and you pick them up while doing uh, part of your sonography or a patient would just palpate lump and come around now uh, i think you all must be using convex transducers to evaluate abdomen pelvis but today when we talk of hernias when you want to evaluate it the spectrum has completely shifted we use high frequency linear transducers in our day to day imaging so technology has brought us into a big leap we have very very good high frequency transducers which can pick up hernias very very well so the topic was hernias inguinal as well as external and this is all about the anterior abdominal wall which has multiple layers right from skin then the muscle layers transverse abdominus muscle transversalis fascia peritoneum so these are the nine layers of abdominal wall if you have a compartmental approach step by step from outer to inner you will be able to pick up everything and anything in practice so this is the way you sweep when you do your scanning and try to start evaluating the abdominal wall for any kind of hernial defect in day to day practice so um, hernias could be anything the one which we have been to given talk is about abdominal wall hernias which could have varied things right from the location the inguinal ones which you see very common in day to day practice the incisional ones which come up after surgery the special ones the spigelian epigastric which could you could encounter in your day to day clinical practice so basic hernia is there is some defect in the abdominal wall most commonly is the transversalis fascia through which the uh, hernia comes out so i'm going to skip these slides because of paucity of time but in day to day practice if you look at evaluatives modalities to evaluate hernias we have ultrasound ct and mr and i am going to talk about ultrasound because it's widely available i passionately practice it's non invasive you can use it in pediatric and adult age group and i think the best part of ultrasound is dynamic evaluation it's real time so you are not going to miss anything because you can do valsalva's maneuver you can tell patient what you want out of the study you can see the patient supine standing which cannot happen in ct mr and pick up the defects really really well ct it serves uh, area so if you look at all the hernias right from top of the abdomen till down right from umbilical epigastric hypogastric paraumbilical and the spigelian ones which i told you so spigelian one is that special one which usually picks up on ct where there is defect in the linea seminolaris so day to day practice i think you all must be seeing this kind of defects where the patient comes for abdominal scanning and you see that there is a defect and there is this pouching out something like this and you know you are dealing with umbilical hernia but that's not important 
just to pick up a hernia. The surgeon has a lot of things which he expects in your hernia report. What is it? One is he wants you to locate the hernia, where exactly it is lying. Second, he wants to know the size of the defect. Most importantly, as a clinician, he wants to know whether this hernia is reducible, irreducible, size of the defect because he wants to repair the same. Contents, I think you can confidently today evaluate on ultrasound. So that it could be an omental fat, there could be bowel, there could be anything within it. And the best part is if at all the patient comes in an acute setting to you, you can always find, tell the clinician that whether this is obstructed, this is re irreducible and also if at all the blood flow today on Doppler you can evaluate and tell it that it has got strangulated. So these are all what the surgeon expects from you. I was talking about this special hernia which affects, uh, which affects across the defect in the semilunar line resulting into this special type of hernia. To be honest only one I have seen in 20 years practice which was confirmed on CT. So this looks something like that where the defect comes out almost it's one of those lateral hernias which you would come across. So the location is very nice. You need to know that there is basically a transverse band which lies between both iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine. Mm -hmm. So it's a line run there where the, this uh, spigalian fascia lies and the, you will see that the patient typically will say that there is a pouching coming out and you have hit the diagnosis of a spigalian hernia. But trust me, if this could be suspected on ultrasound and definitely confirmed on a CT. Then the most common ones which you'll hit in day-to-day -day practice and how are you going to pick it up as a radiologist? Very, very simple and everyone needs to remember only one artery, the epigastric artery which comes out of the external iliac. Anything lateral to the epigastric vessels is unless proved otherwise an indirect hernia. So indirect will always course through the inguinal canal, come from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring and those are the indirect ones seen in day-to-day -day practice. The direct ones are always going to be medial to your epigastric vessels. They are the defect in the Hessel's back triangle and they're usually seen in the elderly age group. And the femoral one by its name, you need to see the common femoral vein. Anything medial to that, you see a defect and a pouching, you can confidently label it as a femoral hernia. So I'm not going to again talk into this because I've been told to restrict my time. but. This is a simple clincher in day-to-day -day practice. You want to diagnose an indirect inguinal hernia. The hernia which goes through deep inguinal ring comes to the superficial inguinal ring and reaches the scrotum has to be unless proved otherwise an indirect hernia. And it's usually seen commonly in these younger males. As against direct hernias is, are basically the weakness of the uh, posterior abdominal wall and the Hesselback triangle defect through which the hernia just protrudes out and commonly seen in an elderly age group. So anything medial to inferior epigastric vessels I endorse will be a direct inguinal hernia unless proved otherwise. Now what leads to these factors could be potential defect, defect or weakness since you are born, it could be prematurity, it could be basically you doing any uh, strenuous activities, especially elderly age group where they have uh, bladder outlet obstructions because of BPH and patients then lands up with a hernia and comes up with a palpable swelling. So uh, direct hernias one should always remember because it comes through the Hesselbach strangle, it will never usually get strangulated because the defect is large. As against the indirect ones go through the deep inguinal ring, come down, go into the scrotum, they are the ones which can potentially get uh, uh, strangulated. Then uh, I'm not going to talk much on this because of restriction of time. Now, the key to all this on ultrasound is basically dynamic examination. So whenever we do ultrasound, we talk to the patient, explain him the Valsalva's maneuver. We evaluate always all hernias in supine and standing position. No examination is ever complete before evaluating the hernias in a standing uh, position. So uh, not going to talk much on this. So search the inferior epigastric artery. Once you have searched that, your job is very, very simple. Medial to it, right direct hernia. Lateral to it, right indirect inguinal hernia. So this is a direct inguinal hernia. Large defect coming out. In fact, see in this case, beautifully we could see that even the bladder was herniating down. And this is typically an elderly man who came with this direct inguinal hernia. And then the typical ones which you all must be picking up in your practice, the indirect ones which goes through the deep inguinal ring. And then it can have varied contents. So once it has that omental fat which goes right from the inguinal ring into the canal and then it enters the scrotum. Then the terminology changes. You call it as an omentoseal. Then once 
if at all you have seen that this patient had large swelling on the right side so see here such a large hyperreflective mass in guanoscrotal in location looking at this content we could confidently tell the surgeon this looks like an omento seal as against there could be bowel lying within it so bowel i think you all have developed a pattern recognition of picking it up and if at all you see bowel something like this within it you know that this is nothing but an entrocin so the definitions will change and that's the way you're going to report it in your day to day practice femoral ones in my 20 years of practice i have seen couple of few but typically females having a swelling near medial to the femoral vein and they come usually with severe pain and most of them have very tendency to get obstructed so the femoral ones are very cryptic you need to listen to the patient's history very very carefully then uh, uh, as i was telling you always do valsalvas manuvar now that valsalvas manuvar itself is such a tough job patients don't understand what is valsalvas manuvar and land up doing lot of mistakes so even if you tell the patient to bloat his tummy well you will be able to pick up these hernias in day to day practice so this is one one was femoral hernia i have seen very rare femoral hernias in day to day practice now what is very important is this take home how are you going to report it in your day to day clinical practice so one is that you're going to talk about right and left inguinal canals you're going to talk whether this hernia is reducible or irreducible because the surgeon damn wants to know whether this hernia is reducible then i will operate at a leisure but if it is irreducible he's going to plan his ot early second is whether it's obstructed non obstructed right side then nowadays because of ultrasound we can see the defect so we say that the defect is small size large size then as as, as i said we always tell the surgeon this is a direct hernia this is an indirect hernia and most important we always punch in that that these are the contents small bowel loops omental fat and today with advent of doppler being used in high frequency always have tendency to put use everything what is there in your machine so if you put color and you see wall vascularity within the bowel you know that this bowel is viable and then you can say that this is an entro seal and this has definitely not got strangulated so this is the way we report everything we always make the patient stand and confirm our findings then other than that there are these large list of differentials if you read about hernias right from if there is a stoma created there are parastomal hernias there are lumbar hernias which occur below the 12th rib the superior and the inferior ones then there are these weird hernias which i have not seen in practice one of them is this sciatic hernia through the sciatic foramen obturator so name of the foramens and through that the anything can herniate in fact there are these internal hernias also which occur near the paradional areas so very beautifully picked up on ct i think litters is one where there is herniation of the meckel's diverticulum and the interparietal ones which occur between the facial planes of the abdominal wall so see this interesting case patient had undergone appendicectomy right iliac fossa and came with a palpable lump exactly near the area of the right iliac fossa when i started seeing it i could pick up this defect i could demonstrate that something is coming out through this defect in the rif i had never thought that in rif also hernias occur i read that yes interstitial incisional hernias can occur along the right iliac fossa and this case proved the same now when you're going to uh, there are going to be hernias there are going to be huge number of complications so right from irreducibility obstructions strangulations anything can occur but most important the surgeon wants is strangulation and incarceration where he needs to go in and operate immediately asap so this see this case beautifully you could see obstructed irreducible hernia something like this the hernia just did not go back but what's clinching in this case whenever you see fluid trapped within an obstructed hernia it gives you a secondary sign that yes this hernia definitely looks obstructed so see this acute abdomen inguinoscrotal patient come with severe pain in an acute emergency at karuna hospital and when i started evaluating it see the bowel had completely got trapped something like this and see the bowel loops were also uh, Uh, uh dilated and obstructed we raised the possibility of strangulated in venoscrotal hernia which got proved the same this lady was sitting on this hernia for many many years did not bother such a big lump with this defect we could see beautifully on a convex transducers here the high frequency did not help us and this was an obstructed irreducible hernia lying with her for many many years and patient got op op uh, operated for the same again obstructed left inguinal hernia with bowel loop seen within obstructed spigelen hernia then nowadays when these surgeons operate there are complications related to the repair so one could be immediate and uh, 
late ones. So the immediate ones are very interesting. There could be day two, day three seromas. There could be these seromas. Then there can be slippage of the ligatures, and then they land up with these hematomas, something like this. Even these hematomas can get secondly infected, and then they land up with big abscesses like this. Nowadays, laparoscopy is used everywhere. So port hematomas can also occur, and patient can land up with you. But most interestingly, nowadays mesh plasty is done by the surgeons, and there they place either the uh, mesh above the transversalis fascia or below transversalis fascia. See, this case taught us a lot where abdomen was normal, normal. In fact, this was a very old lady. She refused, saying that there was no surgery done. The relative said, "Ha, kuch to ek hernia ka operation hua hai." But when we started evaluating this, we saw that all along her abdominal wall. she had this puckered kind of defects but what beautifully ultrasound demonstrated that there was a mesh which was lying like this she had this hitched up hypoechoic lesions all along see all along how beautifully you can get mesh but see the mesh is not seen in continuity it has got buckled at many many places whenever you see something like that always always thinks in terms of an meshoma so meshoma is a entity which has come up since the laparoscopy has come up in a big way so depending upon where Uh, these surgeons place the mesh sometimes this mesh can undergo non fixations and insufficient fixations and then they get buckled up and crumbled and you can beautifully pick them on ultrasound so this is one article which endorses that how you can pick up meshomas in day to day practice so just concluding is that abdominal hernia can have varied appearance i think i love ultrasound is because of its dynamism it's also that you can perform bolsalvas maneuver which you cannot do in ct supine standing which completes a surgeon's clinical angle of looking at a hernia and always in your reports talk where the hernia lies talk about the contents use all the things in your machine talk about use doppler judiciously because you can tell the surgeon that this hernia is irreducible and strangulated you need to go in and operate thank you so much for your attention thank you sir that was a wonderful lecture on uh, inguinal region and hernias i would like to request dr ajay jadhav sir to felicitate dr rajesh kamle sir as always it is a great experience to hear dr rajesh uh, he is uh, one of the eminent speakers we have around and as usual he is uh, lucid talk Uh, is very uh, uh, important for all the uh, uh, nicer uh, points he tips he gives us and the most important thing we should uh, keep in mind always for any routine use of abdomen also we should use high frequency probe always you have to use and whenever there is a suspicion of hernia one should go for uh, uh, supine as well as uh, standing uh, procedure thank you